When Shel Silverstein wrote this poem, he seemed to know that someday he'd be gone, but children would still be smiling with him. Years from now, although I cannot see your face as you flip these poems a while, somewhere from some far-off place I hear you laughing and I smile. That was eight-year-old Claire Filatko reading Years From Now. It's one of the poems in a new book called Everything On It that Silverstein's family has just released. If you liked Silverstein's other books, Light in the Attic, Where the Sidewalk Ends, you'll know this as Vintage Shell. Happy birthday. So what if nobody came? I'll have all the ice cream and tea. And I'll laugh with myself. And I'll dance with myself. And I'll sing Happy Birthday to me. There are kids underneath my bed, cried little baby Monster Fred. Mama Monster smiled. Oh, Fred, there's no such thing as kids, she said. That first poem, Happy Birthday, was read by nine-year-old Trenise Jones. The second poem, Frightened, was read by seven-year-old Paul Osterman Healy. Both of those poems are in the new collection, Everything On It. The book has 145 poems in all. Silverstein eliminated many of them from his earlier books, not because he didn't like them. They just didn't happen to fit in the perfect order he was looking for in a given collection. The editor of the new book, Tony Marquette, worked on other projects alongside Silverstein before Silverstein died in 1999. Marquette says the poet paid attention to every last detail. He would move a piece of art over an 18th of an inch and look at it, how it looked on a page. Wow, on a slight adjustment. Yeah, it's a slight adjustment, but to him it mattered. And I think one of the reasons his books are still so immensely popular after almost 50 years is that every tiny detail was considered. Well, in putting together this new book, I mean, was Shell sort of in your head? I mean, if you made a slight adjustment, you'd say, my God, he's a perfectionist. He would want me to do this or that. Well, you know, I worked with the family, Shell's family, and they knew him, obviously, much better than I did. You know, we had the previous three poetry books, so we had a template of how he liked to pace things out, because pacing and balance was everything to him. Pacing and balance. What, What do you mean by that? Well, when you read a book like this, as you read any book, any adult book, the right-hand side has to want to make you turn the page, page after page after page. And balance of the poems, you know, he has some extremely funny poems in all of the books. He has some more poignant poems. He has some naughty poems. (laughs) And I think he, he liked to mix it up so that a child or any reader would never be bored. And you could let it open at any page, and you would be entertained and you wouldn't feel that you were coming out of nowhere. And so these are his poems. This is his art. Um, We didn't do anything to them. We simply chose them out of the ones that had not had a chance to be published yet. How did you choose the title, Everything on It? Why that poem? If you look at his other books, the title was part of the artwork. I Mm -hmm. mean, to him, typography and layout was part of the whole. And so the art is wonderful. I mean, you look at it and you wonder, what is he doing with all that stuff on a hot dog? And it makes you want to turn. It's a boy holding a hot dog with everything you can (laughs) imagine piled on it up sky high a basketball hoop, a snake, everything, a hat, an umbrella, yeah. Which is what happens when you ask for a hot dog with everything on it. So we laid out a few. We did layouts of a few others. And this was the one that we felt if you were walking into any of the bookstores and this was on a wall, it would draw your eye the most clearly. Let's get to Italian food. Oh. <laughs> um, you said the family really likes this poem. Why is that? Well, they liked me reading the poem. Italian food. Oh, how I love Italian food. I eat it all the time, not just because how good it tastes, but because how good it rhymes. Minestrone, cannelloni, maccheroni, rigatoni, spaghettini, scalopini, escarole, bracciole, insalata, cremolata, manicotti, marinara, carbonara, shrimp francese, bolognese, ravioli, mostaccioli, mozzarella, tagliatelle, fried zucchini, rolatini, fettuccini, green linguini, tortellini, tetrazzini. (gasps) Oops, I think I split my genies. (laughs) It it was my condition to agree to the interview if Tony was allowed to read Italian food. That last voice is Mitch Myers. He's Shel Silverstein's nephew, and he helps run his uncle's estate. He did insist that Tony read that poem, Italian Food, in our interview. In fact, reading Shel's verses aloud was a big part of how they put this collection together. We had a 
number of poems in the excess of 1,500. How, how did you whittle it down to 145? Well, all the members of the team got a copy or a collection of the poems. We all went through them individually first and picked out the ones that we liked, the maybes and the no's. We met once a month for about a year, and we went through all of the poems that we had in our list. And if, if it made it through that crowd, then it was a, a keeper. Uh, we believe and like to think that poems need to be read out loud, and this is one of the joys of the book, and we really were able to determine if it really worked when we said it out loud. And even if we already agreed that it was a yes and it was a keeper, the next time around, we still read it. And who's we? Who was, in the, who was on uh, the committee? Well, the family. We all are behind this big dark curtain. And, <laughs> are we talking about 20 you know, people, like, like, five no, no, people? About five of us. One of the people behind that curtain was Mitch's mom, Shell's sister. She was on the line, too. You want to read the title poem? I'm going to start with the title poem, Everything on It. Sounds good. Everything on it. I asked for a hot dog with everything on it, and that was my big mistake, because it came with a parrot, a bee in a bonnet, a wristwatch, a wrench, and a rake. It came with a goldfish, a flag, and a fiddle, a frog, and a front porch swing, and a mouse in a mask. That's the last time I asked for a hot dog with everything. All right, that's Peg Myers, who is Shell Silverstein. Oh, I have one more, David. <laughs> Peggy, it is all, the floor is yours. Okay, this is called Dirty Clothes. Some put them in a washer, some toss them in a tub, some dump them in a laundry truck for someone else to scrub, some stick them in a hamper, some stuff them in a sack. I never worry about them. I just keep them on my back. Well, there you have it. Shell Silverstein's sister, Peg Myers, along with her son, Mitch. Shell's new book of poetry, Everything on It, is on bookshelves today. You can read some of the verses at our website, npr.org. We will leave you now with Paul Osterman Healy reading the final poem in Shell's new collection. When I am gone. When I am gone, what will you do? Who will write and who will draw for you? Someone smarter, someone new, someone better, maybe you. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm David Green. And I'm Steve Inskip. 